What's up guys, Brian Peacock back once again, Epic Outdoor Adventures. Down here today at the French Broad River here in Brevard, North Carolina. This is, oh uh, gosh, I don't even know the access point, but this is Wilson Road uh, in Brevard. The boat ramp area, here's the boat ramp. Um, water is down extremely low. We haven't had very much rain all summer long. It's been a very dry summer for here. And you can see how low this water is. It's at least two, two and a half, maybe three feet uh, lower than the end of the boat ramp here. So people can't even launch their big rafts uh, all the way and they would have to stop here and drag it up and put it back in if they wanted to actually launch. Uh, kayaks would be great this time of year. Um, but uh, you can see the river um, here and we'll look down that way. And uh, it's just full of log jams um, and rocks, boulders. Uh, there's the Wilson Road Bridge right here. Um, current's down, of course, because the water level's low. Uh, now is actually the perfect time for kayaking. You could kayak up the river right now. Uh, when it, it, after it rains or it's up at regular flood, um, it would be a little, little tougher to do that. So, um, but. I'm down here today. We're just bank fishing. We're riding by. I figured I'd try to stop and uh, catch a smallie. There is some smallmouth bass in here. Um, this actually, this boat ramp marks the end of the Musky Mile, the the infamous Musky Mile here in Brevard. It starts at Hap Simpson uh, boat ramp and it comes down to this Wilson Road bridge ramp um, spot. So that's the Musky Mile. Uh, they stocked um musky in here and uh, they still are in here they're you know they're not overly plentiful but they are in here um i believe three four weeks ago there was one caught over 50 inches i seen posted on um headwaters uh guide and um trip on a float trip here uh, i don't know if it was caught on the fly rod or not i want to think that it was caught on the fly rod but i don't know but there is uh there's upwards to 50 inch musky in here um, not too many trout in this section down this far just due to the musky being in here uh, but there are some trout usually they're pretty decent sized ones that are going to be in this this section uh, the trout that are in this river are up farther towards the rosman area um, but once you get all the way down to the brevard area it gets pretty deep um, it, it gets all those log jams and then that's where the muskie tend to uh, like to hang out in here. Uh, I've caught a few smallies in here. Never caught a muskie yet. I don't really fish this river down here that much. So um, it's just I haven't really been set up for the muskie and all that stuff. And uh, I do love smallie fishing but I just can't tear myself away from the trout fishing too much uh, to do it. So. Uh, we're gonna come and do a kayaking trip out here for some smallies and see if we can't get them as well as the French Broad up towards the Asheville area where it gets a lot wider um, and it gets a lot of uh, shelves and ledges out that way. A uh, ton of smallies out there. The river's a little more polluted, uh, but it is what it is. So I'm just gonna see. I'm gonna fish for a couple minutes. We're gonna see if we can't hang something and uh, if not, well, we're gonna move on down. We might go to another bridge and try it too. So uh, we'll be back. Here she is, the great French Broad River. It's deep in through here. You can see all the trees. This is prime musky territory. Musky and smallies are the predominant fish species in here. There's also suckers and some and some trout. There's some brim. I believe there might be some catfish um, and uh, maybe some crappie, uh, but. I'm trying to get over here. This bank drops off and you gotta be really careful uh, how close you get to this because you'll just pew right down into the down river. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Let's try it right here and see. A little bit of tough to fish um, over all these weeds, especially if I get something big, I'm gonna be in trouble. But um, 
just hooking up with it would be fun in itself so I'm really just feeling it out Oop. just come across something there Move on down there. All right, here is a pump system for the uh, watering of the fields. You can see all the way back in the background, maybe, is the uh, water system that sprays this and it can just be moved with a tractor. It's all on wheels. It's all pumped out of the river here from this pump. Um, river's usually up at least three or four feet more than it is right now. I'm throw it over here. Bring it back into this slack current right here. See if there's anything sitting. Right up there in that current seam right there muskies tend to like these little soft slow spots right off that current oh what was that i think that was just a branch oh there's a fish got a fish got a fish got a fish it is a large mouth Yep, it's a large mouth. It looks like it might even be a spotted bat. No, it's a large mouth. Small, large mouth. Got it on the little dinger, little Ned rig. There he is, right there. It's probably about eight or nine inches, but a fish nonetheless, right there in that current seam in that slack pocket, right there where I told you them fish like to hang out. So. He's just sitting in there eating all them little minnows down in there. And uh, some of the crayfish are starting to get active again now that the water temps are low. Um, I'm not going to throw him. I'm going to walk down here and easily put him back so we don't tear him up. Now that I've caught a fish, I'm not going to spook anything down here. So uh, let's get a little underwater shot of him, shall we? Hold on. Looks like my camera is getting wet inside it must have a crack that sucks all right i'm gonna go in there anyway So I've just noticed that my GoPro is fogging up on the inside of my camera. So I know I do have a little bit of a, a little bit of a crack in the back lens there. I'm not sure if that's where the moisture is getting in, but it kind of sucks. Um, so I'm going to have to take it home. I'm recording still, uh, but I'm not sure if it's going to affect the quality of my video. So we're going to keep rolling and see, but. I'm going to have to put it in some rice when I get home and dry it out. There's another fish. Another bass. Another bass up underneath the pump. About the same size. Come on back, buddy. 
Where's your mama? We need your mama. <laughs> We need your mama. Get back over there in that current. over them rocks right there got yellow jackets around me hopefully there ain't a yellow jacket nest I see one flying around me Let's see there's another one over here under the old pump uh, that's probably only about two foot deep there he is, got another one. Over there under the pump, swallowed it, inhaled it, look at him. That's the third one. Third one in this little cut off of the river. Um, fish tend to school up down in here. and You find little spots like this. They're little gems. You sit here and pluck off quite a few fish in these little spots like this. I haven't got one fish or a bite out in the current. Try it over there again. over in this little bit of slack water here by this cliff tends to where these fish like to hang might be able to get one along this current seam here we'll just swing it back over into this seam just giving it a little bit of action here and there Going down further closer to that tree. Throw it out in the current. I'm just going to let it swing over into that right above that tree system in there. Now I got my drag set light, so if I get something decent, it's going to take off right into that tree, and I don't want that to happen. So I got to be ready to tighten down maybe on this drag. The bend down there in that turn looks really good, but I can't get to it from this side of the feeder creek. We're going to have to walk down the other side of the feeder creek to fish that from the bank, and I'm not doing that today. Nothing down there. On the other side of the creek over there. Whoops, a little too far. Get off of there. That's where I wanted to go. Right there. Try over 
here. There's a little eddy right there I can see. go up a little bit more there's a nice shoal out there in the middle um, deeper on both sides here we got big tree logs there tons of trees on the other side water breaks and current strips in uh, two different directions here I'm trying to get over closer to this edge that was a snake probably was a snake right there be really careful on this edge here. Alright, let's see if there's anything right up in here. Perfect cast. Perfect cast. Oh, what was that? Probably a branch or something. Oh, don't fall in there, Brian. Nothing right there. Let's go over this way a little more. My old arrowhead hunting spot. They have redone this. They dammed up along the river because it kept flooding out and washing this out, which was exposing all the arrowheads in here. Uh, the arrowheads are a little deeper than what this is, but they came in and they filled in all the dirt. Uh, they grow sod here, and uh, now they have tilled again for planting. So I'm coming down just in hopes that we might see something, but I seriously doubt it. I haven't found anything in this spot since they have covered over it. It's a shame it was a great spot. Come on, buddy. They're fine. Leave them on your shirt. They're little stickers. I'll be back if we find anything, guys. There's the old French broad down there. The Musky Mile. Wilson Road right now in Brevard, North Carolina. Uh, this is where the Muskie Mile runs and the Muskie Mile technically starts right up here. French Rod River Basin, Wilson Bridge. you right up here now this is um, this is Greenville Highway that I'm on now and this is what Hap Simpson Park right here this is where the Muskie Mile starts we're gonna go right here real fast just to show you guys to put in the video of the Bard River Access, Hap Simpson Park, 968 Greenville Highway. Park closes at dusk. All right, they have some picnic tables in here. Uh, tons of poplar trees. Uh, this is a good little spot for mushroom hunting as well. Uh, we get a lot of mushrooms in here. But this 
little park is a good little spot for dogs little walks uh picnicking area and then of course we have the uh the river access right down here as these guys are getting out just gonna show it to you guys real fast they are doing some work on two bridges at marker 61 and marker 60 so uh, you got to be careful with that here's the uh, information board uh, about french broad uh the french broad river and hap simpson park the paddle trail uh, regulations a little bit about the history plants stuff like that it's pretty cool How you doing, bud? Good. How you doing? Good. Do any fishing? Uh, we thought we might, but we didn't. Just, didn't. Just moving too fast. <laughs> yeah. I stopped right over here in the uh, sorry, down there at the Wilson Road uh, the uh, side field, and I walked back in there and um, I caught three bass. Yeah. Just There's a few minutes ago. Right here, right in there with the fly rod. He said he caught a little trout. Oh really? Yeah. Oh okay, cool. Heck yeah. Kind of what you need. Yeah, the river's down so low right now. It's crazy low. We need rain bad. Mm -hmm. I might try it. See if we can't pull one out real fast. You fly fishing? Or um, not today. I normally do, but I'm just fishing with a little tube. Actually, I'm just trying to catch some smallmouth. But yeah. I caught all largemouth over there earlier, but they were all like 10 inches. But they were fish, better than nothing. Got this little Ned rig on. Let's see if we can't pull something out down here. Dude just said a guy was fly fishing and caught a little trout here. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Stay back away from the edge so we don't spook anything. to throw it out in that current and then just bring it into this slack water usually that's right where they're sitting at Dragging over some rocks. Nice little spot on the other side over there. Let's get it over in there. Drag down through that stuff. Oh yeah, right in through there. There's a fish that just jumped up out of the water right there. Looked like a sucker. I 
bunch of bait fish in there. Bunch of bait fish. I jammed up in a rock. Now, of course, the wind wants to blow the opposite direction again. It don't look like we're going to get any bites here. Fishing all the way on the other side of that bank. Oh, I got a stick. I got a stick. Down behind them rocks. That's it. All right, guys, here's the French Broad. Hap Simpson Park, right here. This is the beginning of that musky mile. I said water levels way down you can see it here and it's normally up here so it's good four or five feet low uh, probably about three to four feet on regular pool uh, you know winter pool would be a little deeper so thanks for watching guys all right guys we're here at the Horseshoe Boating Access Area here in Etowah, North Carolina. I'm um, about almost halfway between Brevard and Asheville. Um, this is the boating area here. Uh, the address here is 5437 Brevard Road. Um, and uh, here is a little bit about the area, history, sport fishing, restoration federal and project funded and um, right here it says attention anglers these waters contain musky lunge or musky a large toothy fish stocked as fingerlings by the North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission information on musky lunge harvest regulations may be found at North Carolina uh, ncwildlife.org the Western North Carolina Muskie Club encourages proper handling of muskies to improve survival following release and recommends the following items musky net leaders rod line reels i do i stop here a lot work from work and fish at lunchtime sometimes i don't catch much right here at the access although some do so Hello, how are you guys? Good, how are you? Good. Nice day. Absolutely. Another warm one. All right. I'm not trying for musky today. I am trying for smallmouth bass uh, or largemouth bass, either one. It's fine with me. I'd take a musky. And now I'm hung up. Oh, got it out. I would take a muskie, but I don't think I'm going to get one of those in on six pound test line. <laughs> I 
There's a fish. Got him. And it's another little, small, large mouth. He caught a fish. You see? Another little, large mouth. Little, large mouths are eating good right now, I guess. Throw him on back in there. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Hooking this Ned Rig, uh, Texas style, is really working out. I haven't snagged or lost this. See if we can get a bigger one. I can't seem to catch one over eight or nine inches. I'll pop. Mm, one of them is super sour. Oh, I thought you said it wasn't sour. I didn't know these. They made it more sour. <laughs> it hasn't been much so Oh my goodness. Stop, jump, stop running on the pier, please. I don't want you to fall in, okay? Sour? Sour? Yeah. Man. Do you try one? I don't want any. Not right now. Maybe in a little bit, okay? What? Maybe in a little bit? Coming through all these trees down in there. I feel it coming through. Oh, that was some nice fishing line. Normally this pier is floating. This is a floating pier. Normally it's floating, but it's bottomed out right now. It's low, 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 low. Hung up. Oh, come on. Dang it. Come on. I think like I'm going to lose this one, guys. There it goes. I'll be back. I'm tired. All right, guys. Just tying a clinch knot, not even an approved clinch knot. I know it's hard to see. I hold the tag end in my left, the main line in my right, and I insert my pinky right here by the lure. All right. And what I do is I wrap around my pinky under the line, over, then I twist. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. The smaller the line, the more wraps I do. The bigger the line, the less wraps I do. Push that tag end back through where your pinky was. Hold the tag. Seat your knot wet with your saliva to stop friction. Pull tight. Pull the tag end. Secure it, and it's on. All right. This here is. weedless it's a texas rig so the hook is up inside of this worm here so it doesn't get hung up on uh logs or rocks all right let's come back over here and see if we can get another one just look at that view blue ridge mountains a big deal. appalachian mountains some of the oldest mountain ranges on the planet these mountains were here long before any other mountain range on the planet they're one of the oldest mountain ranges and these mountains used to be over 40,000 feet tall these were taller than the andes mountains at one point in time they have eroded over millions of years down to what they are today um, the appalachian mountain range runs from georgia all the way up to New England, uh, into Pennsylvania, up into Ohio, 
um, New England area and the rest of the mountain range continues into the other continent over in the UK. So the top portion of the Appalachian Mountains are in the UK um, on another continent now that the continents have divided over millions of years. Uh, this here is a sod farm. It's a sod field. They, they grow grass and sell it. Um, the, uh, I have had permission to hunt arrowheads here and also fish the river. The French Broad River runs all the way back and it runs the back of this whole entire field. It goes all the way down and it comes right next to the road. All the way down over there, it's probably a mile over there. So um, yeah, it's a good little section and you can definitely bank fish a lot of it. Here looks like something got eight raccoon. Come on boys. Across the whole field. We're over here. This is Wilson Road here in Brevard, North Carolina. And we're just going to walk on back to the uh, to the river access here. Uh, most people do float this river, and this is private property. Uh, I have gotten permission from some of the workers that worked here. Uh, they said, "Sure, go ahead and back. Just leave, take your trash." Uh, but I have not got actual written permission from the land owner. So that is something if police get involved and uh, someone actually does call on you um, that you can, I guess, get in trouble, maybe get a trespassing um, on private property if you don't actually don't have a written permission. So it's always good to get written permission if you can. I don't personally know the owners of the land and I, I've tried to get in to find out who they are but I just haven't been able to find them so uh, I asked the workers they said they didn't mind so if they're not going to call in on me then uh, I don't have anything to worry about um, but if you are thinking about coming out here uh, you might just want to talk to some of the workers that work out here sometimes before coming on this property so I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there there is a lot of uh, arrowheads along the French Broad River and a lot of campsites. I found a lot of them in this field. Actually, they're all the way over there against the road over there is where I find most of them. Um, but uh, the French Broad, a little, here's some deer tracks, old deer tracks here, small deer. Um, there's some, the um, French Broad River little history on the French Broad River here that we're getting ready to go back to. Um, the French Broad River is one of the oldest rivers in the United States. Um, I think it's the third oldest river. It might be the United States. It could be in the world, I think, actually. One of the oldest rivers in the world. I may be wrong on that one. I'm going to have to double check that. But um, the... Uh, this is a special river because this river does not flow uh, south or east toward the ocean. This river flows north and northwest in certain parts, then turns in Tennessee and then goes back down south and empties into the Mississippi River. Um, so this, this river, uh, because of the mountains, takes an unusual path that most rivers don't take. Um, so being one of the oldest river systems in the world, uh, it has a lot of um, human um, interaction over the last, you know, thousands of years. So a lot of uh, Native Americans uh, settled around uh, rivers and uh, they would use the river systems as a source of water, a source of transportation and uh, all that good stuff here. These little tiny feeder creeks here can have uh, a lot of wild trout in them. Uh, they, they definitely are worth uh, looking in and, and definitely hitting. Yeah. Between the two, uh, a rock and a fish. Uh, it only takes a couple, couple fish to really realize what's going on down there. 
these are pretty versatile baits you can swim them you can use no weight on them you can drag them on the bottom you can just drift them in the current like i'm doing now and then you can um you can just dead stick it like uh during uh winter time and uh spawn like let it sit down in a bed and just let it sit there and not even move it Swim it back. All right, we're gonna go to another spot just to try it out. We're not really fishing a lot today. I'm just wasting some time and uh, I'm just doing something just a little bit different than we normally do. Over here in these trees, there's a lot of junk in this river and it's ever changing every time we have a decent rain. Uh, this river changes um, All these trees move these root systems move uh, banks collapse uh, all kinds of stuff Happens in this river every time it rains really hard and it comes up and floods this river comes out into all the uh, fields around here and uh, makes it look like it's lakefront property after it rains really bad here. So this river is prone to a lot of flooding and a lot of changes on the river. Um, if you are planning to float this river, kayak, um, drift boat, I've seen John boats in here as well. Uh, with trolling motors and um, it is recommended to bring a chainsaw especially after bigger storms uh, just because of um, you never know what you're going to run into sometimes there's actual uh, log jam blockages that go all the way across the river that you would actually have to cut your way through to get your boat or of course pull your boat up over top of but Sometimes that can be hard depending on what kind of boat you have. Um, so it's always recommended to bring a small chainsaw with you just in case. Here you go, here's something for you. This is a freshwater clam or a mussel. Uh, there you go. And um, this one's dead, it's open. There's another one down there. It looks like it's still alive. Um, these freshwater clams uh, were a staple diet for the Native American Indians. Um, and they used to make a lot of jewelry out of these. Um, sometimes people find these with holes, perfect holes drilled in right up here. And uh, they think that that is a necklace made by Native Americans. But little do they know that there is an actual uh, animal that eats these clams and it actually burrows a hole a perfectly round hole in the clam and eats the clam from the inside out through that hole uh, i'm not quite sure what that animal is uh, called i can't remember the name of the animal that eats them but uh, they do eat them, and uh, the, a lot of those holes in the shells are made by those uh, those clam borers um, that eat these clams. Not really quite sure on the species of clam. Oh gosh, this is I just got my dang feet wet. <laughs> like I said, it's really slippery out here.
I'm using a uh, Black Max Abu Garcia combo Walmart like 50 bucks we got a Z-Man Ned Rig um, jig head with a little tiny crawl uh, rubber worm is probably about two two and a half inches and uh, a little small thing we're, we're targeting smallmouth bass today I believe I got six pound test um, drag is set pretty loose um, just so we don't get any break offs and we get a lot of abraded line abrasions on our line from all the rocks and stuff like that so uh, uh, some braid probably wouldn't be a bad idea with a leader fluorocarbon leader um, but I, I'm not set up like that today here's the uh Oh crap, here's the little Z-Man kit that I'm using today. I'm getting ready to lose all my jig heads. 